Hi everyone. Hope you're doing well. And um, I want to apologize for not being able to put some of the videos out there that I had mentioned um, previously that I would. Um, my husband and I are staying in a different location and we have limited internet compared to what we had previously. So um, I only have so much to work with and get this stuff out. So, um, but I did want to share something with you that the Lord, um, an experience I had with the Lord here the other day because I feel that it's powerful. It was powerful for me and it was also powerful for those I have shared it with. So um, what happened is the other night while I was in prayer, the Lord um, told me to remove my cross off my neck. And um, I've had this cross on my neck. As a matter of fact, people posted comments on some of my videos about the cross on my neck, but I, um, I felt it glorified God, it represented God, it represented the cross and Jesus dying on it, so I wore it, and I wore it proudly, but, um, the Lord had put it in my heart to take it off, and, um, he basically told me to take the cross off, and then he told me to go look up graven images and idols, and, um, so I did. I looked it up, and for three hours I started doing research on the internet, and um, I was starting to like question things. And the Lord began putting images in my mind of things I had in my house that I didn't look at as a graven image or an idol. Um, you know, for an example, my mom gave me a little planter, a little um, a little plant in it, and on the side of it there was a little elephant, little ceramic type elephant. And, um, you know, that's a, something I have for my mom. She lives on a total different coast than I do. And I, you know, every time I looked at her, looked at that, it reminded me of her. But anyways, it was things like that he was putting in my mind. Um, a little um, flat stone that um, I had on a stand. And it had uh, some scripture written on it. It had... Faith, Love, and Hope. It had two little butterflies that were made out of metal. They were on it. And um, a cross that I had on my wall. Two crosses, actually. One was was a wooden cross with two nails on it. And the other one was a ceramic cross that had the serenity prayer on it. So these are the things that he's showing me. And I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, if, if you will allow me to sleep tonight, then tomorrow morning, I, would you walk through the house with me and show me the things that are not pleasing to you? And I'll remove them. So the Lord gave me rest, and I slept, and the next morning I got up and I prayed, and he started by speaking to me, and he said, There comes a time when my children must step out in faith. There comes a time when the things of this world must be put down. That time for you is now. You have held on to your man-made traditions for far too long now. You must come out from them. And I want to stop here because I want to explain that I do not celebrate pagan holidays. Um, I am so separated from the world. I've come out. I, I don't have a life other than my life with my husband in the Lord. So I just want to interject that because I want you to understand how serious this information is that he's bringing to you guys today. Okay, And he said, you must seek me wholeheartedly and obey my commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. And I want to interject again here because I have never bowed down to anything except the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when he said, you shall have no other gods before me, I was like, whoa. You know, like, I don't have any other gods in my mind. I don't have any other gods other than you. But he's seen it differently. And he said, you shall not render to them what is due to me. For this is an abomination in my eyes. My children must be different from the world. They are chosen to come out from the traditions held by those who do not know me. You must come out from them. For your time to participate with them has come to an end. My son died on the cross. It does not mean that you must keep a reminder of his death upon it. There are those who say they love me, and yet they worship this statue. They hang it on their wall, in their car, and in their man-made churches. It disgusts me. It's filth in my eyes. 
And at this point, the Lord began giving me an image of Nepal and the city where all of their idols were being destroyed. He showed me the Buddha in the center and said, this is no different than what you have in your home. And he continued on saying, they parade their ceramic and wooden idols as if this glorifies me. It does not. It abhors me. It angers me and it causes me to lose my patience with them. My children must be different. They must remain committed to me in the heart, not the wall. You must remove those things that keep you from coming to me. You must destroy them. They are not worthy to reside in the house of my children. Remove them today. Destroy them and forget about them. They are a hindrance to your walk. They put enmity between you and me. They make a mockery of my son's death on the cross. Destroy them. My child, in order for your faith to increase, you must seek me, not the things of this world. For tomorrow they are gone. I am a jealous God, and I will not share you with another. Does not my word speak of this? Then why do you bow down to them? And I want to interject here because I have never bowed to anybody other than the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This behavior must stop for it is not of me. My enemy is hard at work to deceive those who do not know me. He has also deceived the ones who do. Destroy them, my child, and bring them no more into my house. For the next time I destroy them myself. Hear me this day. You will place no one before me. Do not hesitate, for your instruction has been given to you, Lord God Almighty. And that's all, I mean, that's powerful in itself, but that's the message that he gave to me. So, you know, I, I try my hardest to follow the Lord. I try my hardest to glorify him in everything that I do. And um, I was not aware that a few of the things that I had in my house, like the cross on the wall, was an offense to him because it took the place of him. That's how he looked at it, and this is how he showed me. And I'm going to give you an example, because he had my mom remove some things as well, and she took her cross off, and she said to me, now that I've taken off my cross, I feel naked without him around my neck. So do you see how that, cross that symbol of him became a competition for him okay so that's why this is so important for us to understand that some of the things that we believe we're doing to glorify him or to show others that we love him and that we belong to him they're an abomination in his eyes so i just want to bring this out to you guys and let you know that um, you need to pray and ask the Lord if there's anything um, or what is there in your house, in your car, in your place of employment that you have that has become an idol in his eyes or that is a graven image in his eyes, something that, that um, makes him angry and, and makes him jealous. So um, pray about this and hopefully he'll reveal those things to you. Um, because in the almost five years that I've been walking with him, I never... Never in my wildest dreams thought that I was glorifying anything other than God. So um, I hope this blesses you guys. I love you all and um, take care. I will be back as soon as I can. Bye-bye now.